Hi everyone, it's Melissa again, and welcome to Bookcast 9. We're at, book, we're at Bookcast 9 already, and we're continuing our discussion of the Harry Potter series. We're talking about Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. And this is when the series gets darker, and we meet brand new protagonists and villains. So, let's get started. Harry he is going to be arriving at Hogwarts and is excited to start the new year. And he and his cousin Dudley are going to the beach and Harry is getting teased by Dudley's friends over the fact that he's having nightmares and waking them up and when they're having sleepovers. So what and Harry kind of doesn't under, doesn't know how to tell them. Again, he and Dudley does not have a good relationship and it's forbidden for a wizard to tell a non-magical wizard about their power about magic. It's forbidden. That's sadly that's why he's kind of like okay because he just they don't understand what's happening. When Dudley and Harry are going home, they're attacked by dementors and most likely sent by Voldemort. And then Harry uses magic, the Expecto Patronus spell, to save them. And they get a, and Harry gets a letter saying that he needs to go to trial the Ministry of Magic. If he doesn't do this trial, he will be expelled from Hogwarts and can't go to school again. And Harry is not happy with this. And he had to figure out a way for him to leave his house because his aunt and uncle aren't letting him leave. They don't, they don't care for Harry that much. But luckily for her, Harry, he is saved by order of the Phoenix members. They're brand new, the brand new groups. He meets Nymphadora Tongs, Kingsley Shackleball, Ma the real Mad Eye Moody, people who are trying to save Harry, and they are, and they manage to help him as help him leave the house by causing a distraction for the Dursleys. And Harry is taken back to. The black, the, the black's apartment, basically where Sirius Black grew up, and there he's reunited with Sirius Black and Remus Lupin, Ron and Hermione and the Weasley, and everything's great. They want to figure out what they're what the group is talking about because um, they won't let them in the conversation, and they find out other members of the group include Albus Dumbledore, Severus Snape, and Minerva McGonagall, all professors and, and headmasters at Hogwarts. Minerva. Snape said he's just like his father, and he and Sirius do not get along. Snape doesn't get along with Harry, so Harry doesn't see a problem with this. And Harry goes to the trial and he's allowed to go back to school. And But that's when he meets two people who he immediately distrusts. He first meets Cornelius Fudge, who is the head, like the head leader of the Ministry of Magic, uh, who basically runs the Wizarding World. And he basically is like, Voldemort's not back, you're lying. And he's trying to pass Cedric Diggory's death as an accident. But Harry knows the truth. He said Voldemort's back, but he doesn't want to believe it. While Harry... Well, Harry also meets Dolores Umbridge. Now, why does she hate Umbridge? Well, Umbridge is on Canary's side, and much to Harry's dismay, he she is being forced... She's allowed to teach at Hogwarts as defense against the Dark Arts, much to Dumbledore, well, being, Dumbledore was forced to do it. He had no choice. He had to. And she doesn't even teach some defense against the Dark Arts, only like proper writing stuff, like stuff that's not really useful in the Wizarding World. And Harry tries to say that Cedric, I saw Cedric die. It was, he was murdered. And Dolores like, no, it was not murder. You are lying. You get, you get three detentions because Harry keeps talking back. And quick, she quickly makes pets and a squad out of Draco's friend, who she does not like. Who, well, people she does like, but Harry doesn't like. Harry is confused, and in spot, and Harry's like, we cannot do this. She gets, a, he gets a group of people who believe Voldemort's back, including Luna Lovegood, who teaches Harry about Thestrals, uh, Neville Longbottom, the the son of two previous uh, Order members, Alice and Frank Longbottom, Hermione, Ron, other members. Now Luna plays a big role in this story, along with Neville. Luna teaches um Harry about. Thestrals. Thestrals are creatures that can only see, be seen by people who've seen death. And Harry saw Cedric die, and Luna explains she witnessed her mother's death. And they both talk about this. Thestrals play an important role later on in the series. Then we meet Neville Longbottom. And Neville tells Harry, it doesn't tell Harry right away why he wants to join the Order, even though 
even though Harry wants a reason, Neville's not going to give it to him yet. Hmm. While they're looking for a place to practice magic, Dolores gets wind of this and or, and bans all clubs at Hogwarts. So Harry's like, we need to keep this a secret. And Hermione puts a spell for whoever tells Umbridge about the or about their clubs or practice defense against dark art magic, they will be marked on their forehead with pimples saying like liar or snitch. And Harry and Harry's like, okay. They work, they work, they practice their training in the room, room of, of requirements. Basically a room in which you can practice magic and, well, a room that basic that that can transform to any room you want. A room that can practice that you can practice magic in secret for Ron for Harry and his friends. Then we have you can transform to place where you can keep something a secret. It's a really interesting room at Hogwarts. When the when Harry gets wind of Arthur Weasley being attacked and tells Dumbledore, well, Dumbledore tells Snape he had to. Pr- he has to teach Harry how to block memories from his mind. And while and while they're practicing his memory, Snape talks bad about Harry's father. And Harry trying to sit, is trying to say this father was a good man. Snape said he was not. And during a fit of rage, Harry sees through Snape's memories that Remus Lupin, Peter Pettigrew, Sa- Sirius Black, and his father James all bullied Snape in, high, in school and made his life miserable. They made, basically made his life complete misery and Harry is shocked and Harry and Snape tells Harry to leave the room and he doesn't know why I mean Gryffindors and Slytherins were already rivals but Harry is like I would never do what they did to Draco or to Crab or to Goyle so he confronts Sirius about this and Sirius is like well we were 14 and Harry says I'm 14 and then leaves the room and this leaves Sirius and Remus in complete, like, what just happened? Why did he say that? And I think that when Sirius begins to realize that Harry's 14 at this point, the same thing's happening, what happened when they were in school, but he's not doing that to Draco. They just disagree and that's it. And that's when Harry realizes that his father wasn't exactly the best person when he was a teenager. <clears throat> and that's when we meet, um... Sirius then tells Harry about the Black family, his family, a pure blood wizarding family that disowns anyone who either marries a muggle born or half blood wizard or is born without powers. This explains why Nymphadora, and this is when we get into Nymphadora. Nymphadora is actually Sirius Black's cousin. And they are real, and they're cousins because her mother, Andromeda, is actually Sirius's cousin. So they're like second or first cousins. And Nymphadora's mother was actually disowned by the Black family because she married a muggle-born wizard named Ted Tonks. And, well, they had a daughter named Nymphadora. She, they go so far as to have this tapestry, which has all the members of the Black family. If you, if you either are a squib or you're mar- or you this or you marry someone who's not a pure blood wizard, your face gets, face gets burned off. The same thing happened to Andromeda. Because she married a muggle-born wizard and left the family. So this explains why Nymphadora and Draco are actually first cousins, but they never officially met because, well, they never did. I, Draco's parents will make sure that he never met his cousin, the first cousin, Nymphadora. So while Sirius tells him about the um, but family, we find out about Bellatrix Lestrange, and many people call her Voldemort's most loyal and most supportive Death Eater. Well, we find out after Arthur Weasley is attacked by do on an order of the Phoenix mission, we find out that Neville's Longbottom's parents were not only part of the minist- part of the um, order of the Phoenix. When Harry, Ron, and Hermione see them see the parents at the hospital, they realize that they are basically unwell, like. They can't even remember Neville's their son. Neville and his grandmother then explained that when Voldemort was first defeated, a group of loyal Death, Eat- Death Eater, Bellatrix, the, 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 the Strange, the two Lestrange brothers, and Barty Cross Jr. Ca- captured them and hurt them into trying to get them information. They were hurt so badly, their base, their minds were basically insanity. They're, they were hurt into insanity. I'm going to say that, and. 
they are shocked about this. It was hard for Harry to understand that even though he, that's, he knows that's Neville's mother, Neville's mother doesn't recognize Neville as, his, as her own son. And this breaks them apart. Especially when they are breaking out, broken out by Lord Voldemort and, every, and the blame is still on Sirius Black because he's still an outlaw. They still think he is responsible for the deaths of multiple people and, you know, releasing Harry's name to the, uh, Harry's parents' location to Voldemort. Unfortunately, things take a worse turn for Harry. Harry's, um, Harry witnesses Umbridge's cruelty for his hand when she, when he, she humiliates Sybil Trelawney. And this is really bad for very simple Trelawney and, ma and causes her, well, she gets her fired at her job. And Sybil is a crazy woman. It's like a woman who Harry doesn't know that well. But ultimately, the way she fired her was just so cruel. Minerva confronts her, but she can't say anything because it will cost her her job and she needs to be at the school to protect Harry. Dumbledore can't say anything because of that. And Percy Weasley, Ron's brother, is joining more into ministry work instead of helping his family. And Harris is so confused. But there are a few things that's helping Harry out. Like, his group is going really well in the Order of the Phoenix. But unfortunately, Morna Cho Chang, Harry's girlfriend, tells the group, tells, the, tells Umbridge about the group, or friend, it depends on the book of the movie, and, they are, and the group has to disband. Harry is forced to go through, is forced to have the words, I must not tell a lie, with carved into his wrist, his hand. And he can't do it. And it's a really, it's a hard scene this, to read and watch in the movie and read in the book. When Umbridge takes Ron and Hermione to um, the forest, she's captured by centaurs. And she first, of course, she humiliates, makes fun of them. But when they capture her, she's like begging for help. And Harry says, I must not tell lies because Umbridge is trying to ask Harry, can you, can you tell them I won't harm them? But I can't lie. You know, she, he, she, you know, she would harm them in some way. Get rid of their land or anything. So this all leads up to the big battle in the Department of Mysteries in which we find out the, the prophecy. According to Harry, when he reads, when he listens to the prophecy, he says, one shall not live while the other survives. This indicates that none other than either Harry has to die so Voldemort can live, or Voldemort has to die so Harry can live. And that leads to a big battle in the part of the ministry with Harry's friends and the Order of the Phoenix members, and it all ends in the death of Sirius Black in the hands of Bellatrix Lestrange, his own cousin. And this devastates Harry. But ultimately, there is some light at the end of the tunnel. Because of the Battle of the Department of Mysteries, Voldemort reveals himself to not only Cornelius Fudge, but to almost like the entire the Ministry of Magic. Therefore, he cannot hide anymore. Cornelius Fudge is then forced to step down at the Ministry of Magic. Umbridge loses his job. Draco's father, Lucius Malfoy, gets arrested for being a Death Eater. And Harry says they have something that Voldemort has. Ha, they have something the Vold they have something the Voldemort does not, and they and, the, and Hermione says what something to fight for, and that's the end of Harry Potter of the Order of the Phoenix. There are other characters, so we meet new characters in this book like Tonks, Luna, Neville, Kingsley, Mad Eye Moody, and Harry, and then and you think this and you think this book's a little bit dark. Wait till we talk about Hot Blood Prince in the next video, because that book gets even darker. That's all the time I have today. Bye!